Oh, brother, what an absolutely ridiculous, miraculous Hollywood ending to last night's game. We're going to get into that in Andy's Witchcraft today, get into the rest of the matchups, as well as an awesome Wheel of Shame. You don't want to miss it. Enjoy the show. Like, leave a comment, subscribe, and watch. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. I'm surprised you didn't hold that for... Two minutes. <laughs> Football is funny, funny, funny sometimes. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Oof. Andy, Mike, and Jason joining you. Andy, Andy, and Andy <laughs> joining you. Welcome, man. Busy day. <laughs> Are we going right to it? I. How do we yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, of course we're going right to it. Go Rams, baby. I mean, once again, <laughs> your witchcraft and wizardry. I'm I'm really like I'm I'm trying to keep my distance from you. Never say anything rude or insulting. Yeah, you watch yourself. I don't want to be bewitched by uh your your witchcraft, but um goodness gracious, you did it again. You predicted the most unreasonable This was by far the most egregious and <laughs> Like at the time, nonsensical. Like week one, when it was uh, the the excitement of the Broncos had to go to Seattle. Seattle had seemingly looked like they were in tank mode. That was a just that was crazy to make that call. But for a team that's like, well, this guy that we just picked up off waivers, he might play. And Baker Mayfield has We've looked- lost six games in a row. They've won three in a row. The line <laughs> has already moved to minus seven. Was- and you called them to win. Yeah. Or to almost uh, upset almost. and they and they flat out <laughs> won. And you called the Cam Akers touchdown <laughs> as your guarantee. Oh, it was because Cam Akers touchdowns, if there's anything guaranteed, it's that and so it was so so scary and fun. <laughs> scary. Yes. Scary has to be in there. I have um, Newt and Toe of Yes, frog exactly now then we wool went of back bat and, and tongue of dog we went back and did the research so far on this season you are nine and three with all but two being outright wins and the spreads on these games are up to minus 11 like they, they these are wild calls that you are almost always getting right i don't know I, I think this is one of those things when you lose one of your senses, which would be my DFS play at the end of this show. Oh, you traded. Your other, gotcha. your other senses are strengthened, you see? that's, that's now, That makes sense. <laughs> last night, when you're watching that uh, the Raiders punt. Oh, that was, yeah. Was the greatest, that punt was great. <laughs> the greatest punt I've ever seen. I don't know if you guys caught it in the replay. I believe it was Mac Hollins. He was doing the Mac gritty. Mac Hollins full hit the gritty as the ball continues to roll. So the mid play, <laughs> this play is going live on. Play and he's celebrating because everyone in that stadium, everyone watching the television, probably I, I don't know where you were, but all of us watching that punt went. That is a game winning punt. Unbelievable. Uh, now was it? I had the game on mute. We were. Uh, I was hanging out with my son, my wife. I had the game on the computer. It was on mute. Were they talking about their decision to punt at all? I because it was fourth and I, one. Yeah, the cowardice. <laughs> the yeah. The, the last night overall was a master class by the Raiders in just that was. <laughs> I mean, like that was the ultimate play, hoping we don't lose i there was there was no playing to win at all by the raiders we got the they fun, went prevent offense we got they did and we got the yeah zero targets for Devonte adams in the second half we got the um fun game we hoped for with baker yes uh the smile on my face at the end uh has was was delightful i can't 
believe. Like I went back and watched the highlight again this morning. Uh, plenty of people have now cut it with the Titanic music, Baker <laughs> throwing it to Jefferson. Yes. But literally, I cannot comprehend single high safety, one-on-one -on -one Jefferson opportunity with 15 seconds left and, and, and no timeouts. Like, you should line three people up on the five-yard line. Like, when you talk about why you play prevent, yeah, that, this that's, is where you the do it. that's the moment <laughs> to play prevent. Just a master class in blowing a yes. football game, which they have now lost four games in which they were double digit halftime leads. Um, shock. I mean, it's, it's never been done. Neither before. of my predictions were even remotely probable with three minutes left in the game. Cam Akers right. had the fumble. I, I thought he might get benched the rest of the game. I thought he was because he was off the field for quite a while. And did you realize that uh, if, if you haven't seen it on Twitter, this is back-to-back -back primetime games that yep. have the exact same finishes, 3-16 to 16 with minutes left to go. The game ends 16-17. to 17, The team came back and won. Just and the, unbelievable, the really. Ra the Raiders had the huge sack. I don't – what down was it? And then they got the unsportsmanlike because Bozo the Clown <laughs> knocked the ball out of Baker's hand. Like – I mean, one of the most undisciplined maneuvers I've seen in quite a while of like, all you have to do is not taunt Baker Mayfield right there. And I think the game was done. You, all you got to do is just play football. Just, you just, just play football. Don't be a baby knocking a football yeah. out of somebody's hand. Just like you got a huge game changing quarterback sack celebrating that. And I know oh, man. the Raiders fans, I'm sorry. that Yes. Because your pain this year has been immense. It is – your team is much better than the record. The truth is you're better than the record. You're, you're poorly coached. I mean, do you, you're, you've been poorly coached. Yeah. Derek, Derek Carr had a game – like, he can't, he can't make the mistake he made on the goal line, throwing that interception. Yep. Like, you are – you have to have some sense of the score, right? You, you kick a field goal there. It might have been out of reach at that point. Like, don't make that kind of mistake. But and yeah, so, wow, what a game! And all the people, because I know they're out there. Like Derek Carr this week against this team and everything like like this was a very good streaming situation for Derek Carr. So like to, to have him come out and the Raiders say no, we are going to to only establish the run, even after our running back has. Uh, I don't. Hand I don't know if Josh Jacobs has a broken finger or what. He was clearly in a lot of pain because he just kept shaking that, trying to shake the pain out every single time he touched the ball in the second half. But twenty-seven carries for Jacobs, ninety-nine and a touchdown. You're happy with that for fantasy, but everybody else on this team, despite was it nineteen pass attempts for Derek Carr? Twenty. Okay. 20, Eleven for twenty, one hundred and thirty-seven yards, Whoa. no touchdowns, two picks, just catastrophic. And they thought they could just yes, win they did. the game. They did with Josh Jacobs, and that the offense couldn't do anything. They for thought the Rams. they could not lose, right? And like Adams had the the two catches, or two of the three catches for Adams in the first half were redonkulous because he's Devonte Adams, and then you don't target him. Like what? What is happening? I, from what I've heard, Jeff Saturday could have done a better job. There are sixteen photographers, and we know how I feel about that. That have been knocked over by Devonte Adams <laughs> since the end of that oh, game. Yeah, if you have a camera, hide. I mean, just get out the way. <laughs> so yes, we got. Oh man, we we we. You guys bemoaned the Thursday game. Yeah, we got a different yep. game. I don't know how you can play quarterback in two days. I really don't. It seems impossible. And what is the craziest, the absolute wildest thing that is kind of overlooked with all the uh, the narrative stuff that is is unbelievable is Baker looked good. Like I, the throws yes. looked strong and crisp. He was putting and, good and air a under bit the down ball. The field, yeah. yeah, and down the field. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, yeah, who, I've watched you play for the last two years. What in the world? Well, I think uh, step one is perhaps the Panthers are even worse than we f first thought. Uh, but the, and yeah, that's what I thought. I remember having a moment watching this game, and I'm like, you know what? I th the Rams were down, and everything looked like they were going to lose. I'm like, I don't. I know what the I know the stats are probably bad for Baker right now, but I think he's actually looking 
respectable and admirable. And then they showed, and it was like Baker has just had just passed a hundred yards. I'm like, oh, those stats are bad, but he looks all right. And then he goes to win the game, and that catch by freaking Ben Skoranek, Ben Skoranek, which uh, that's a uh, a hot footballer's tip. We love to give the you know the names to sing. You hit Ben Skoranek to my Sharona. Mm. Oh man, so good. You've it's been a- hoping that that would come true. Very- ben Skoranek, hey. <laughs> It was a magnificent, entertaining. It was lots of drama fun. filled, ridiculous Head- evening of football. Yeah, with a lot of headbutts. <laughs> with a lot of head, he is so he's concussed. titanium. What is he? How he- is he doing that? And not his, his forehead's not exploding. Baker clearly thrives on no expectations. Like his best two performances of his life: the first game he came in, yes. for Tyrod Taylor, and then the last game when he had no chance of succeeding. Wild. I know we could talk about it for a long time, but right. we have a lot more to get into. Mike summed up the situation for fantasy. Acres saved his day with a touchdown. Uh, Devontae Adams was a – look, if you counted on vintage Devontae Adams getting to your playoffs, it was going to be a disappointment for you. And you, It was but like not PPR style, but that going into the second half with three for 71, I mean, if you got Adams, you're like, yeah, here we go. Dude, give, dude, give me another 50 and a touchdown in the second half, and that's how you start the week. His first halves versus second half this year have got to be out of control. But um, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday we give away $100 to FantasyChamps.com, the best place to get trophies, the best place to get your championship belts, swag for your league. We give away $100 over there at FantasyChamps.com to a Foot Clan supporter. This week's winner is, uh, well, here's their name, Mike. Running up Taysom's Hill. Running up the hill. Yes, yes, very nice. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for supporting the show over at JoinTheFoot.com. Appreciate you. Congrats on the $100 and uh, one final reminder here, the Megalo Bowl, Jason. Yes. Get those. Um, this is the final week for the waiver ads, so you can prepare for your Megalo Bowl playoffs. Don't uh, – we're trying to get it out there as much as humanly possible. Megalobowl.com. There's a giant yellow banner. We've posted on Discord. We've said it on the show now a couple times. So um, we did all we could. Mm-hmm. Papa Josh, The if the emails come rolling in that people didn't know that waivers were going to lock – I'm sorry. That's on you at this point. Yes. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Let's go ahead and jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, I need help with this first bit of news. I really do because I don't know how to feel here. Michael Carter practicing yeah. in full for the Jets. They take on Buffalo. Uh, I, I've looked up and down the old uh, the game log for Michael Carter this year. There's not a lot to get excited about. Two, three double-digit games this year, but we talked about it. Like The amount of plays the Jets are running with Mike White is encouraging. Zonovan Knight has been very good, wasn't a factor early in the year. So when you look at Michael Carter this week, do you think that his best game of the season could be in store? I don't think his best game of the season is going to be this week. I do think his best game and games of the season are are coming up. Um, this will be his first week back. There's Right now it looks like some rain or some snow in this game against Buffalo in Buffalo, a divisional matchup. So I feel like Michael Carter should go right back into the starting role. He was pretty good this year. He looked bad because Brees Hall was next to him, but he was getting the work. He's involved in the passing game. We've seen him with Mike White in the past with a lot of dump-offs. I certainly am fine starting Mike White this week. I think he is a flex option. I Michael don't Carter. Carter. Yes, sorry. Uh, yes, Michael Carter. If I could play Mike White in a running back position, do it. I would do that. Yeah, I would too. Andy? Yeah, I'm in. Okay. All right. But Michael Carter, as a flex option, should be – I, I I think he's playable this week. Uh, Trevor Lawrence remained sideline on Thursday with the toe injury. Eey. So uh, still saying he's going to start even after that practice, but we'll talk about it on the on the show or the game preview today. Yeah. Seahawks updates, Jason. 
Geno Smith on the injury report with the shoulder. Ken Walker, DJ Dallas didn't practice. Travis Homer, full practice. Oh, man. So as of right now, we same as yesterday, where it appears to be Travis Homer as the first player up, the player that we project to be behind him in the running game is Tony, Tony Brooks, James Earl Jones, Jr. Robinson, the second. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then um, the Geno Tony Smith. Tony for short. To, yeah, we, you could just call him <laughs> Tony, 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 if you want to shorten his name. Uh, the the real shocking thing for this morning, I had not seen anything about it, was Geno being limited with a right shoulder issue. And I looked as far as I could find this morning as of this recording. There was basically nothing. The only additional information I could find is that he's still expected to play. You don't like to see a throwing shoulder on a Thursday added to the practice report, but no one from around Seattle seems concerned yet, so I won't be concerned. This is an area where the 12th man, Russell Wilson, probably no shoulder soreness this year. True. You know? That's true. Uh, yeah, Travis Homer upgraded to full was nice to see. He was limited the day before. So, um, if, if Travis Homer is on your waiver wire and you have that spot, I would be putting him on the bench. Not, and not just a, for me, this, at this point, I don't want another team out there that I could be competing against who needs to Even win. if you aren't playing. It. Yeah. That's what I mean of like you, I would probably be playing some defense on Homer because if he, if we if we get another do not practice from Walker and DJ Dallas today, and we look like the the runway is clear for Travis Homer to be the starter uh, in this matchup against Carolina, he he could be very good. Saquon Barkley added to the injury report on Thursday with a neck injury. What are you hearing about that, Mike? I that's that is all we have gotten because it was just kind of a flash of well Saquon is dealing with the neck uh, as one who I woke up on Halloween this year. With a neck injury, mm. and due to incorrect sleeping, I believe was <laughs> yes. the was the Inapp causation. inappropriate sleeping and inappropriate age, <laughs> and it it sucks, man. Like if, if you've ever woken up with the neck, so maybe that's what maybe that is all it is at this point. Bad pillow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get him more of a uh, memory foam type of situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need we need to help Barkley out with I'll that. Get him the ostrich, the ostrich <laughs> pillow where he has to. <laughs> For the plane, yeah. Mm. Uh, it, so unless you hear something today, just just let it go. Uh, the Dolphins wide receiver situation: Jalen Waddle upgraded to full. Tyreek Hill missed due to uh, illness. So uh, we'll talk about that game on today's show. Mike Williams. We'll talk about the Charger game as well. Full participant on Thursday. Uh, after the kind of, yeah. I, would, I guess I would say, like the engine didn't start last week. We thought it might. Here Maybe he's back this week. T. Higgins added with a hamstring injury. Take a look. Can we zoom in on Mike's face here? Let me get the official T. Higgins face. Yeah. That's... yeah. For those listening at home, it looks like a combination of the bitter beer face and a bad fart. That's that's T. Higgins on, on my roster. Mm. Need him. Need yeah. Him. And I'm sure he plays, but hamstring Thursday. Oh, hamstring Thursday is a bad that's day, not, man. That's that's not what you want. No, no that is that is not good. And Footland, to peel back the curtain, um, this is a big week for these two gentlemen yeah. who are not facing each other but are definitely facing each other. Andy must have Mike lose. We have a there's a fantasy triangle thing yes. going on in our league right now. <laughs> there's definitely a fantasy triangle <laughs> thing. Not is the happening. kind you're thinking about right now, yeah. you naughty dogs. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Andy, um, he needs the impossible <laughs> to happen to sneak in. And after last night, not just his calls, but actually what happened in the game yeah. to set him up, it's looking possible more possible than it did at the beginning and of the I, week and i'm telling you the don't go to his basement <laughs> because there's a lot of blood sacrifice oh man down there there has to be oh boy oh boy yeah i'm it's, running out of goats <laughs> I'm, I'm almost out of goats this year uh it, it, football is funny like i said all right deandre hopkins didn't practice due to illness rondale moore didn't practice due to ah, ah. his groin yeah, I, I'm I'm moving on from Rondale Moore. I saw somebody ask me the question of uh, Rondale Moore or Darius Slayton as a hold for the playoffs. I'm, I'm holding Slayton. Like it, it's time to move on. Rondale had a window. That window was shut by some friends named DeAndre Hopkins and Hollywood Brown and 
uh, it's not that he couldn't come back and have a game here or there. It's just that with the groin injury, you got to move on. You got to make plans with a healthy player. I am right there with you in a league that I was uh, that I'm playoff bound. I chose to drop Rondale for a defense for the for the Titans, so that that Week 16 matchup against Houston uh, is more valuable to me than Rondale. All right, I and, think that is it. No, the, did you say the Deontay? No, I did not. He was downgraded to a DNP on Thursday due to a hip. I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah, that is. Now that is one that you really need to keep your eye on. Maybe he pops back today, but is the Muth getting loose? He's gonna get so loose. Uh, is is uh, the Luthus. the squeaky uh, squeaky loose? Squeaky George? <laughs> yeah, I mean. George Pickens really, really should get some targets. Is, this week. is the Pickens going to be Kickens? I'm just hmm. trying to. Hmm. You're just trying to get in to, on it. Add to add to your. Busted. Why don't you Pickens a new uh, joke? I gotta I gotta get busted. <laughs> no, on that's my, my button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, that's that's big news. I mean, this is uh, maybe, you know, a a benefit to your team if you were starting Deontay because single digits is where he lives. So <sighs> it's the mercy rule. I mean, it's like the Lamar yeah. thing. Um, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. We're going to jump back into the matchups in a moment. Six games remaining. I will say this. The news on Friday messes with my head for our fantasy face-off. I know, uh, I, I know exactly what news you're talking about and how it affects your lineup. Leave Geno Smith in your lineup. No, I, Geno's not in my lineup. Oh, really? No, but it's uh, this happened last week when when uh, uh, Stupid Kyle, as I call him. Yeah, uh, when as his mother calls when him. When Stupid Kyle said that Jalen Warren was, quote, the free square. And he says it in the show. Najee looked like he and, might not play. And before the show, uh, I'm just laying it all out right now. <laughs> before the show, Jace is like, let's make sure we let Kyle get his lineup announced first during the segment <laughs> in case we want to make last second pivots. It's true. So you two colluded. Yes. Against oh. Team Deucer. And, yes. And, and lost. Team, and Team Deucer still won? Yes. Oh. And I don't know why it's Team Deucer. I mean, moral support over there didn't make a lineup decision. Al. Did you have any say in the lineup that he put out there? Nope. Okay. Just a hundred percent faith. Yeah, and a hundred percent winner now. That's right. Um but but yes, I got thrown off I had a lineup last week. It was delicious, nutritious, and I made a pivot. So I'm not doing it today. I'm not making a mid show pivot. Oh man, this is the week you should. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. <laughs> there is no winning here. The, the pivot would have saved you. I have no newt <laughs> eyes left for the fantasy forecast. All right. Jacksonville at four and eight take on the Tennessee Titans, who are seven and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Tennessee minus four. The over/under is forty-one. Uh, Tennessee has won five straight in this series since twenty sixteen. They're nine and two against Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville has been the team this year that kind of has flashes during the game, and it just never really pans out in the end. I don't expect them to win this game in Tennessee, and Trevor Lawrence. He was my start of the week yesterday before we got the full DNP. I think he had been limited the day before. All of his words have been, I'm playing. All of the actions after coming out of the locker room were that I'm playing. So, you know, saw this a little bit with Justin Herbert earlier in the year with an injury. Maybe they're just keeping him out, letting him have the minimal amount of wear and tear, and then getting him out there on the field. Yeah, the matchup is great. It will be a slight downgrade for all the receivers if Trevor Lawrence can't go, but mm -hmm. C.J. Beathard behind him is at least competent enough where if Trevor Lawrence wasn't to play, because the matchup against Tennessee's secondary is so good, I'm still playing Christian Kirk and even Zay Jones as a spot start. Uh, I realize, I know. look, Zay Jones, we talked about this so much right before games were going to kick off. We're like, Say Jones is totally going to let us down now because he's he was everybody's spot start last week and that's when he lets you down. Now people are off of Zay Jones. He'll he, he should be okay. This matchup really for Tennessee, they are a pass funnel defense. They shut down the running back position. You're not going to run well against Tennessee and it is very easy to pass the ball on them. So That's I, not stopping you from playing ETN, right? 
it's not stopping me from playing ETN, but I see him almost like a like a flex play. So if the if I've got a loaded lineup, I I do think he's in consideration. Um, but obviously, you'd have to have great players because his talent can bust off a sixty yard run at at any point in time. The players that you do play against good defenses are the athletes that can make something happen in one play. All right. Uh other storylines within this matchup, Travis Etienne has been a little disappointing for fantasy purposes over the last couple of weeks, but the Jermichael Hasty excitement did Hasty, not come to Hasty. fruition, right? I mean, we saw 88% of snaps for Etienne, and they were playing a uh, suddenly tough run defense in Detroit. Christian Kirk is Mike's start of the week. Kirk, Zay Jones, if for some reason Lawrence doesn't go, are you getting off of those players? No, I'm with Jason that is, that Beathard is competent okay. enough with the matchup that I'm still playing. Like Zay Jones, because he, I mean, he by definition and name, he is the spot starter. Maybe he's the one I pivot away from, but Kirk I'd roll with. I don't understand this update quote from Brian Dable. Probably has to see if Saquon Barkley can play Sunday. Oh, wouldn't my commit. Goodness, limited in practice. Oh today. my. Goodness. This is more of Andy's magic because Andy needs another team to lose that has Saquon. And so do you. So you're both. I, I, I'll that, sell my soul for a playoff <laughs> spot. I that, really will. That uh, it, What? Saquon would have to be uh, on a f fully unable to play. This game is too important for the Giants in division trying to make the playoffs. Like, I... I mean, I, I feel like they will give him 100 injection, uh, injections to get him out on the field. <laughs> that could be dangerous. To. Derek Henry, it's been a weird ride the last few weeks. Um, I know when looking at Derek Henry in DFS, I say I see Jacksonville, I say great. Mm -hmm. um, and he should be great. But I, I've been thrown off a little bit by some of these lower opportunity games. I know the game script last week against Philly, 11 carries, that's to be expected. 17 against Cincinnati. Okay, that's that's great for a normal running back, but Derrick Henry's living in the 30, 32, 28, 28 zone. Are you pretty confident you see a uh, vintage performance this week? I am pretty confident. If you look at his wins and losses this year, uh, he's averaging 112 yards on the ground per win, 58 yards on the ground per loss. I expect them to take care of business at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and this is really one of those things where um, if Derrick Henry can't get it going in this game, you start questioning, are, are, are his legs, are, have we hit the wall? Have we hit the career wall? I don't think we're there yet with Derrick Henry, and so I'm firing him up with full confidence. And then you have two tight ends that I think are, are interesting in this game. You have Evan Ingram, who... Schmevin! Sorry, Schmevin. I would never be caught <laughs> recommending yeah. Evan. I play, I play Evan. You I play, play Schmevin. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Chig Okonkwo, who I named as my start of yeah. the week yesterday, tight end athletic freak for the Titans uh, saw further comments yesterday from the offensive coordinator that he has now earned more designed plays and nice. playing time in the offense. This is a team devoid of explosive options in the passing game. Yeah. I mean, they have one it's Traylon Burks and he is not participating in practice in the concussion protocol. You would have to assume with a DNP on Thursday, you presume right now that he is out this week. That is the Odds on favorite is not a guarantee yet, so pay attention. But if Traylon Burks is out, Chick is Chick is going to be extremely important to just being able to, I don't know, break a tackle. Who do they have on this team that can break a tackle? Like Robert Woods can run a route, catch a ball, Possession fall down. Receiver, yeah. But no one else can break yeah, a tackle you, outside of Derrick Henry. And you could end up with another Austin Hooper, two touchdown, limited yardage game and disappoint my Aconquo hype. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on the – athletic talent and the yardage yep. uh going up for chig all right we are going to take a quick break and come back with the uh the, the most fun team to talk about the broncos i know we don't need to continue talking about russell wilson but my goodness, when I saw how cheap he was in DFS now. Oh, man. I mean, he, he's like in the backup range. Tell I me mean, you he's did it. like, oh, tell, I did. Tell me I did it. No, I did didn't it. do it. Dang it. Kansas, keep trying to guess my quarterback. Kansas City, they're nine and three. Denver is three and nine. Ooh. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Kansas City minus nine. The over under is 44. 
and I am not remotely close to an almost upset call in this one. This is, I mean, the Chiefs are as good of a defense as you can play this week, in my opinion. Um, the Broncos haven't beaten them since the Obama administration. <laughs> 13 consecutive losses to the no, Chiefs? Really? Wow. That's not even a rivalry. A rivalry is when Are we sure they go back this? and forth. That can't it's, be. It's true. It's true. Wow. That's... September 17th, 2015. I remember where I was. <laughs> you, Kyle, you wrote up Russell as a GPP play for our DFS pass? He's just so cheap, and they – And no one wants him. And they get thrown on a ton. So, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson – here we go. Patrick Mahomes okay. is in your lineup. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey's in your lineup. W who do I start at wide receiver, Andy? If I was uh, choosing one? Order them. Oh, gosh. If I'm ordering them, I'm going to I'm going to say it's going to take me a while. MVS, Juju, Sky Moore, Justin Watson, Kadarius Toney. I would go Juju. MVS, yeah, that's Sky fine. Moore, Justin Watson, Kadarius Tony, and I. Juju is the first on my list. He is a flex option that I'm not excited to start. I I do think he still has a ceiling that is higher than a lot of other. You know, you're looking at guys that are trying to go out there and maybe they got a safe floor like a Zay Jones. Zay Jones is a fine start. I would I would start Juju Smith Schuster just because he has the upside um, a little bit higher with Patrick Mahomes, but. I'm not looking forward to starting any of these wide receivers. Even what? if you tell me Patrick Mahomes throws for 350 yards, I'm like, uh. The Broncos are a really good defense, and I don't want that to get lost in the storyline of this game. The Chiefs are going to win, but the implied point total for the Chiefs is 26.5. I don't think they hit that. I think they're in the 20-point range at most, which means you might have – it might just be Mahomes and Kelsey with question marks around Pacheco – Damian Pierce or Isaiah Pacheco? Damian Pierce against Dallas. Oh. I'll go Pacheco. Okay. In that one. Yeah, Pacheco's actually been really strong the last three weeks, so Pacheco, to me, uh, not a great matchup, but I'm going to stay in the flames. Deonta Foreman, that who's, who's supposed to play, ask. Carolina. When you say he's supposed to play, what, what was his practice his, situation on Thursday? He said he'll be fine. Well, sure, I think but, he was limited. I'm With, go, he's got a, a foot in ribs. Yeah, I'm going to go Pacheco, just injury-related. What okay. about uh, any of the Dolphins running backs? Yeah, I'll go Dolphins over Pacheco. Okay. The matchup is very good. Uh, uh, I think the other side of the ball, I mean, really, you're just talking about two potential starters that you could uh, throw into a lineup in the passing game. One is Jerry Judy, who, I mean, he, he hasn't been great because Russell Wilson, but this matchup couldn't get much better and. Cortland Sutton does not look like he's going to play. Would you start Jerry Judy or Juju Smith-Schuster? I'd play Judy. Judy. I would yeah. as well. Yeah, Judy is a little bit like the situation we had in Houston where, like, you know, Nico Collins was last man standing, and Judy's a better player than Nico Collins, so I think you can go there. Um, I also think you can play Greg Dulcich yeah. with uh, some upside and excitement. 85 receiving yards last week. Hackett talking about the wide receiver role for him. Latavius Murray is also going to dominate opportunities in the backfield. The Chiefs are tenth against the run in the last six weeks. I would I'd be looking at Latavius Murray with a ten point Yeah, he's a floor player. That's his ceiling and floor. Yeah. yeah. The last three They're weeks, together. The last three weeks for Latavius Murray, fifteen points, ten points, eight points and half PPR scoring. I would expect him to be right around that range. Yeah, you want him to get four or five uh receptions, even Correct. if they're short yardage. Just get the PPR numbers up. Tampa Bay is six and six somehow, and they take on the San Francisco 49ers, who are eight and four. Games in San Francisco, the DraftKings Sportsbook line: San Francisco minus three and a half. The over under is thirty seven. That's a low over under. We have a, uh, a Brock Purdy situation in San Francisco, and you know we've been down this road before. If you've watched enough football, you know that occasionally the Baker Mayfields of the world, the or the backup quarterback has the ability to come in, surprise a defense uh, that is not prepared for, for him, and sometimes it's not as, as nice the next week. Now, if I wanted a quarterback like Brock Purdy to have success, I'd surround him with Debo, Samuel Brandon, <laughs> Ayuk, George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey. And focus on yards after the catch. But, you know, the Buccaneers' defense is a run-stopping defense. So you look at 
putting the ball in Brock Purdy's hands, which I'm sure the game plan is going to be for Todd Bowles and company, and seeing if he can supply enough firepower to win this game. I would not be shocked if Tampa won it. I, I, I would be pretty surprised just because of how bad the Tampa Bay offense has been and how good the San Francisco defense has been. I don't expect a lot of fantasy value here from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side of the ball. Uh, that being said, uh, just to finish up the conversation on the 49ers and, the, and their receiving weapons, George Kittle, he's scary with Brock Purdy there, but the matchup is very good. And I would assume that if Kyle Shanahan's going to kind of scheme some things to prepare for a matchup, George Kittle should have a couple big opportunities. And hopefully that, that works out for you because if you've got George Kittle, you're playing him, right? You don't have right. another better option and the matchup looks okay. So speaking of that San Francisco defense, number one in points allowed, second in uh, yards per game allowed. That is giving up the least amount of those numbers, not the most. Leonard Fournette was added to the injury report on Thursday, limited uh, with the foot, not spat, spotted yet at practice on Friday. Rashad White and Fournette were both heavily involved in the passing game last week. Fournette actually looked pretty good on the ground. This is not a defense you can run on. Do you Man. lean Rashad White or Leonard Fournette if you have to play one of those two? It has to be White with Fournette popping up on the on the yeah. injury report on a Thursday with a new injury. He was he was he missed the game with a hip injury, wasn't it? Um, so if this is foot, that's new. And I'm not Head really and shoulders. <laughs> yeah. It's knees and foot, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, the important questions answered here on the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Uh, I would start. Well, with we Rashad. are the footballers. I think we know a thing or two. <laughs> Uh, about foots yeah we're practically podiatrists um Rashad White would be ahead of Leonard Fournette but I don't I'm not like really jonesing to play either one of these guys against the San Francisco 49ers so Mike Evans talk to us about your oh, favorite man. fantasy player Mike Evans you mean the guy who has as many top 12 weeks as Robbie Anderson no. oh or Dante Pettis no or Nelson Aguilar? I'm guessing he has one. That is correct. Yeah, he has one. That it, makes no, sense. Granted, it was the number one fantasy wide receiver that that week, but uh, <sighs> Michael, it, it's tough. the The place where you have beaten the San Francisco 49ers has been uh, the wide receivers uh, getting loose down the field. Mike Evans seems like he might be needed this game. I think you could start him, but he has he has been very very bad. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's just there's yeah, it's for, it, and it's pretty inexplicable too because he's still getting targets only four this past week against the saints did turn those four targets into 59 yards but nine six eleven in in those other games the last month and he's not been in the top 30 here's why it's a problem that could continue no bruce arians the downfield passing game time in the pocket and four, can't four or five offensive linemen missing it has changed the equation a little bit for the offense, so that would be your concern. It would. Uh, Here are some they are going to have to throw the football. So I think like Mike Evans is in my lineup, but I will wear a blindfold for that game. Like, yeah. I'm not watching. It, it, it's tough. I. I uh, is he in your lineup? Is the real question. Um, he is in my lineup because Christian Watson is on bye, but I would play other players over him. You know, last week I put Joshua Palmer in over Mike Evans. Here, since week nine, this is the last six weeks, here are players who have scored more fantasy points than Mike Evans. Demarcus Robinson, Deontay Johnson, Van Jefferson, Mac Hollins. Uh, how about Julio Jones? Oh, man. But I know you're the king of, of reminding us that wide receiver position is inconsistent. Mike uh, Evans is a proven talent. He's a And he's a proven inconsistent talent. Yeah, so you do need to not just completely 49ers twenty third against wide receivers. Yeah. So. You, you don't just straight bench him, but if you've got another really good option, he needs to be in those questions you're asking yourself on a weekly basis. There's just a lot of names in this game. Debo last last week was benched by a lot of people um due to the injury, but should be involved. Brandon Ayuk. I would play Ayuk over Evans for sure. But not over Debo, right? Uh, would I play I, – I think I'd play Ayuk over Debo. Ooh. Does that, I, I, does that I, seem crazy? It seems a little crazy. It's just – it's not outrageous, but it's spicy. When I think about the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' strength you – You're going to need a glass of milk with that take. Tackling, yeah. the, tackling players at the line of scrimmage is – you know, they, they've got the players, I think, to stop Debo's little screens and, and uh, you know, runs – 
So I I I like Ayuk with Brock Purdy. Nobody stops Debo. Yeah, how about now you? Now that you Change your mind. Drop, does that fire you up? It definitely fires me. All up. right. <laughs> Carolina's four and eight. They take on the Seattle Seahawks at seven and five. This game's in Seattle. DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Seattle minus four and a half. The over under is forty four. Uh, the Seattle defense has had some issues in recent weeks. They are uh, on the precipice of being the worst team against the run. That's where the Deontay Foreman interest comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, good matchups. Foreman has kind of been their guy. Like, if they could run the ball with Foreman every play to win the game, that that's what they would do. I mean, Atlanta, they did it twice. You know, Sam Darnold, he completed 11 passes. So this is a team that would love to play some defense. They've been pretty good against wideouts. You have this Geno Smith shoulder situation. You've got a running game that, you know, if you're lucky, Travis Homer's the lead guy. So is this uh, does this have the potential of a more competitive game than than you might think? Uh, I think it could if Deonta Foreman is healthy. Deonta Foreman healthy should be able to really gash up the Seattle Seahawks gash him. Uh, yeah. defense, and it, he he projects to to be the type of player that. Seattle would have a difficult time with we don't know how healthy he is and that's the big question mark for me so um I do think and ironically and, and then Gino's shoulder if that's a real issue they're not going to be able to run the ball because they don't they just don't have the players on the roster to run the ball I love Gino he was my start of the week I love uh, Tyler Lockett DK Metcalf I mean this offense should march down the field and throw all over the Panthers you know, 300 plus passing yards for Geno. It's just kind of some injury question marks we have to monitor as the week goes on. Friday practice reports and beat reporters saying how healthy they are. I just haven't seen much of anything on on Geno still. So right now, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, no concerns with Drew Locke coming in. Correct. Uh, Noah Fant last week got into the end zone was a number two tight end. Hard to say he's going to repeat yeah, no. those numbers, but he is a desperation play yeah he, he is or even a dfs play because of the running back situation is he your dfs play because of the running back situation he is not my <laughs> dfs play okay let's just spend all of friday trying to deduce the lineups <laughs> uh dj Moore, ride or die on wednesday six targets uh i'm not riding with dj yeah because of this look six teams on by he's still in my top 24 at 24 so i mean like i would play dj Moore. Over Gabe Davis against the Jets, I would play him over Joshua Palmer. With assuming that Mike Williams is going to play, which I guess that's the Sunday Night Football, so you you may not. Sounds like Mike Williams is going to play. Yeah, so I would go with DJ Moore personally. Uh, Jacoby Myers with his injury in the Monday Night game, I would go with DJ Moore. So there are there's some fringe circumstances Mike where Evans? he's in. <sighs> Mike, no, I, oh man. Mike Evans is two spots ahead of DJ Moore, so it's not it's not wild to look at those rankings and say, oh, "Well, I'm going with DJ Moore in a better situation." But it, that's I don't a, know that it is a better situation though. DJ Moore has, you know, obviously he's been bad the majority of the year. And I'm and, saying the the matchup is. But a better. that's what I'm saying. The Seahawks right now schedule adjusted on the season. They're number three against wide receivers. They've got those two fourteen rookie, in the last six weeks though. They've got those uh, two rookie corners that have been. Yeah, uh, Woolen is. Really, Legit. really good, and I expect them to be on DJ Moore. In 11 pass completions is not encouraging for um, Mr. Darnold. Sunday Night Football, by the way, Mike has a Mike has a pretty nice guitar sitting behind him today. Oh, oh. yeah. I know not everyone's watching on the YouTube, but very nice. Yeah, shout out to our friends at Fender for that one. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty – you're going to do some, some live shredding at some point? <sighs> Never I, know. I mean, I can't rule it out now. can't rule it out. Miami's eight and four. They play Sunday night against the Chargers, who are six and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Miami minus three. The over/under is fifty-two and a half. Tua Herbert back-to-back -back picks in the draft. Tua is number one in deep ball completions. Thank you, Tyreek. Thank you, Jalen. Uh, number one in accuracy. Number one in yards. Herbert is uh, taking a step back. Yeah, had some injuries. Hasn't had Mike Williams and Keenan all year long. This game I'm really excited about. I, I think it's going to be a back-and-forth type of game. The Dolphins' defense has improved against wide receivers of recent 
uh, in you know recent matchups, but they're a pretty vulnerable defense in in general. Twenty eighth against fantasy quarterbacks over the last six. So the question here is. I think what do you do with the running backs for the Dolphins and what do you do with the wide receivers for the Chargers? Because Herbert, Tua, Eckler, and then, of course, the Dolphins wide receivers are all locks. Uh, for, for me, it's it's decently easy. The, I mean, when it comes to which Miami Dolphin you would prefer at the running back position, that's pretty tough. I lean Jeff Wilson, but made Raheem Mostert at the start of the week because I do believe that both can be played. Uh, both, I, you know, I think that the timeshare will be close to even-ish, so they're both in. And for Mike Williams, a full practice on Thursday, after limited yesterday or on, on uh, Wednesday, I, I am playing Mike Williams. And yeah. the, the matchup is juicy. I know it was uh, – the, the Dolphins have been better against wide receivers lately, but and it was catastrophic. Had you played Mike Williams when he went out on his first target? Uh, did he, I don't remember if he caught the ball, but he jammed his ankle – Reaggravated it and left, but I would play him. The upside is. Uh, there. Does that mean you're not playing Palmer? Yes. That, See, that, I, I have. I, I have been that way. I've been warming on the idea of starting Mike Williams because he's been a full participant early in the week, and I, you know, when I look at push come to shove decisions, and I'm saying, okay, am I starting, you know, Michael Gallup or, uh, you know, Darius Slayton or Mike Williams? This game environment is yes really great I want players in this game so to answer your question uh differently than Mike's I I think Palmer is a play I think Keenan Allen is a play I think Mike Williams is a play the running backs I, I basically well, you like Gerald Everett too he's your star yes. of the week I yeah, ever is in I think you know Herbert and Tua could go off in this game and have a mondo outpouring of points I mean that's that's the hope <laughs> Pour them out. That, that is certainly – I mean, when you've got a team that can run in certain situations like the Dolphins against a team that cannot stop the run at all, usually, you know, the running game is going to slow the game down. But this is like you're going to have 20-yard chunk plays, you know, every six or seven runs is what it, what it feels like against this team. And Things could change if Tyreek was not available due to illness. Certainly. For some reason. You, you that, don't want to see either of these offenses slow down. The Patriots on uh, Monday Night Football at six and six take on the Arizona Cardinals, who are four and eight. DraftKings Sportsbook line: New England minus two in Arizona. Over under is forty three and a half. So, what are we doing with this matchup? You have the Cardinals, who have lost four or five before their bye week last week, coming off the bye, a little bit healthier. Mac Jones, Kyler Murray. What a what a weird year for Arizona <laughs> and, and the fantasy kind of output for these players. Uh, Kyler, you're comfortable with yeah, it? Yeah, no, you are. I mean, top 12 and 8 of 10 starts. Like Kyler Murray, uh, the Cardinals not getting it done, but Kyler Murray is for fantasy. And when you've got Hopkins, uh, who hopefully is healthy and active for this game, he's uh, – He had the illness too. Right. He, he, was, he was sick, but uh, him and Hollywood Brown are enough for Kyler plus his legs to – be good in a tough match. I feel like Hopkins catches a lot of like uh, Tuesday, Illnesses. yeah, Wednesday to Friday. He Illnesses. catches everything. So I mean, all right, that's fair. Hollywood, that cold, caught it. Yeah, <laughs> got I, it. I didn't drop COVID. <laughs> no, Hollywood. No, no, no. He's gonna play. He's gonna Hollywood. play. Hollywood, Mike, you love him. I, I, I don't know if I say I love him, but I think that the fact that he came back from his injury, what about now? Oh, no, that's better. The uh, the output wasn't completely there because six for forty six. That's that doesn't get it done. But to miss five games, come right back into ninety seven percent of the snaps, eight targets. That I feel good with. I think you're going to see a couple deep shots to Hollywood in this game. So if he comes down with one of those, you'll be happy. The Dort should be back. Not. I mean, not a player to be ignored. I I agree. Uh. In our, like this is a, this is definitely a deeper league, deeper roster. But our dynasty league, I mean, with the six bye weeks and injuries, I'm kind of scrambling to, to feel the roster. Are you and, the, and then the door, the Dorch has been sitting on the bench just waiting for this moment. The fact that he's like Rondell Moore did not practice again, and the Dorch will be the slot wide receiver. He should see I don't know five five to six targets. 
Trey McBride breakout game, Arizona tight end, rookie? Oh, no. 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 Yeah, certainly not. I mean, unless did they if they <laughs> if they traded like just, coaches, maybe. Just looking at the last six weeks for the uh, the Patriots defense, just it, trying to do the matchup thing, man. It should happen. It should have already happened for Trey McBride to be a player of that talent with that draft capital and Zach Ertz out with that situation. He should have broken out. This is more like Trey McBride's maid. Oh, uh, okay. You know, yeah, never the yeah, always the yeah. bridesmaid, never the bride. Okay. Like he needs to earn McBride. <laughs> his name? He needs to earn his name. <laughs> he needs to earn his <laughs> right name. Right now he's I, McBride, like, McBridesmaid. Like, uh, when the when the doctor sl smacked him on the butt and he started crying, he earned his name. Oh, well. Uh, not and in my now, book. And then he lost it when he got to the NFL <laughs> and played Thank you, uh, his Jason. entire rookie season. It has nine receptions. Trey. Only. Yeah. Hunter Henry is Mike's start of the week at the tight end position for the Patriots. If you Ramondre, got the underpants to sustain it. Ramondre should have a monster week. He Damian should. Harris is not practicing. Uh, the Cardinals, as bad as they are against tight ends, they, they're they pretty bad against running backs, too. I am quarterbacks. Yeah, and the all the dump-offs. Like Somehow the Cardinals have like a rule where they give extra space to players in the flat. They give an, a little buffer. Mm -hmm. to let them receive the football, kind of get up to speed, and then they go try to tackle them. But they take a poor angle. <laughs> Unless you're Buda Baker. Is I love Buda a, Baker. Is this a geometry thing? It's a, We've got bad geometry in Arizona. You're right. Like, we, we need to get those kids into sophomore math. Well, not kids, but these grown adults. Like Vance Joseph? <laughs> yes. Get them a compass. <laughs> yes, a compass. Do they still approach, use the old uh, the compasses and the protractors? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think you so. have to. What do you mean you have to? How else are you going to draw I don't know, it? computers. Well, yeah, if you're doing... No, I'm not holding my protractor up to my computer <laughs> to measure it. I let the... Watch let, me draw a circle on my screen. <laughs> I just feel like big... Now there's a hole in it. Big protractors probably losing some money over oh, the last definitely. 20 years. Yeah. They've there's got to be on. some company. That's all they do. And calculator companies. I mean, they've got to have taken a hit. They yeah, used to the, be the most phones? expensive electronic yeah. you could buy. Yeah, and now it's like it's in your pocket. Ever, who who do, Right now, wherever you're listening, you have a calculator on you. All right, uh, Jacoby Myers, are you just kind of moving away with the yep. concussion? Yep, I'm not going to risk it. Any value for Devontae Parker against the 24th-ranked wide receiver defense of the Cardinals? I, I think he is in a spot-start situation, but if I'm looking at Devontae Parker against the spot-start, Zay Jones at Tennessee, I'm going to go Zay Jones. Um, news update to the update before, but Brian Dable's exact quote was uh, – Will he play Sunday? He said, quote, I hope so. Any doubt for Sunday? Quote, probably got to see. So he said nothing. Yeah, Thanks, he said Brian. Nothing. He said nothing. All right, into the fantasy face-off we go. Fantasy face-off presented by DraftKings. All right, uh... Here we go. I'm sad for, for the first me? time this season oh, yeah. that it's you because I wanted it to be Kyle, but I'm happy that it is not me. Um, uh, okay, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and spin it because Patrick Mahomes. I'm blaming you, not me. Wheel of shame. Spin the wheel. I've I've become accustomed to the wheel. It's, yeah. it's my uh, mistress. Uh, Cowboy. Let's see what Spartan. ridiculous terror. Oh, okay. Right. Surf's up. Is oh, that the winner? Surfer dude. Surf's up, bro. All right. <laughs> right. I'm excited for this. Righteous. Wait, why does he have a whistle? Am I? Oh, like, I mean, it, that's a lifeguard. It's. Am I a lifeguard now? It's on the beach. <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't think surfers are using whistles. But They're, lifeguards. You're surf. not carving a tube. With a whistle on your neck, bro. <laughs> Seems like a dangerous. Bro. <laughs> they, but they wear okay, like shark's tooth. You. Oh wait, do we got the zinc? Oh yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have the white uh, now, zinc nose. Are you just going nose? Or are you gonna go no, full just, uh, uh, Facebook? No, no, I can't no. think of what's <laughs> Zuckerberg. Yeah, the full Zuckerberg. <laughs> no, 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 I'm nose. good, man. I'm good. I, I mean, I'm sort of good. A little. Oh, no, no, no. You gotta just leave it there. That's gnar. You don't rub it in. Well, just on the nose. I don't For know. For the effect, bro. Okay. Tubular. Here, Tubular. Here, here you go. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> just going to go ahead and put on some sunscreen here. <laughs> Bra. Dude, 
It's not a bad look. It's not a bad look. I think you could take up surfing. Do you think I could win a, a stinking fantasy forecast with I, this uh, I do situation? Not. No, yeah. I don't. No. All no. right, can I kick it off at quarterback? You can. Uh, that way you can pivot, Jason, uh, off of my stud team. Jared Goff. I, I settled in on Jared Goff against Minnesota at 5,600. I was I was dancing all over the place. I was I was into Hertz at one point. I was into Burrow at one point. I, uh, I just like the savings. 5,600 Jared Goff. Yeah, I like that. Um, I went with Geno Smith at 6,200. He's a little bit more expensive, but I like the situation better. A little bit and more I, injured. And I, well, this was, I, I picked it before the injury and I st stuck with this. Jared Goff would be my pivot if for some reason he can't play, but I assumed that <laughs> both of you guys Surfer would. Surfer whistle. <laughs> Surfer whistle. Well, Surfer that's, whistle. That's my wave, bro. <laughs> <laughs> off my wave dude um i assumed both of you guys had jared goff so i've got other uh options in my lineup to play off of you i've got geno smith uh you're gonna notice a theme here in some overlap of some teams i may or may not have you're just playing your league of record team. <laughs> uh jared goff if it, it's me me and jared goff yeah. are the bestest of friends this week that was actually part of my thought process here too was like last week i spent up above the consensus quarterback and it's just so it leaves you so vulnerable in this game you guys were rolling burrow i was rolling mahomes if he doesn't outperform i just lose money i mean that's it yeah uh at running back uh i went with a uh a tandem i like this week at the price zeke at 6100 against houston deandre swift at 5800 against minnesota i'll piggyback because i've got zeke at 6100 and deandre swift at 5800 wow i love your picks Andy. i also have sunscreen on my microphone <laughs> All right, boys, here's where we are going. The highest of T. I see your Zeke at 6,100. Oh, Pollard. And I raise you with a Tony you Pollard. You went Tony. I, I went both. Oh, I thought oh, about it. I, oh. I am dancing with the devil. Yeah. I went all in on the Dallas running backs. I thought about playing both as well. That's Pollard 6,700. Zeke 6,100. Give me every single point that the Cowboys score this week. Not on defense. Well, very nice. My wide receiver room, it is uh, delicious. I've got Stephon Diggs at 8,300. Nice. Paid up. Amon Ross St. Brown at 7,800. Oh, paid Garrett, up. Garrett Wilson at 5,900. Well, I've got Amon Ross St. Brown and Garrett Wilson as well. I do not have Stephon Diggs. I went all the way down to Zay Jones, the spot start. Uh, I have Zay Jones as well. I wanted Amon Ra, but I'm. I need him to be bad this week, so it was just bad uh, bad juju for me, so I could not play him. Uh, but Zay Jones, 4,700. Jason started the week. Tyler Lockett at 6,500. And then I'm going with the Rod God, Christopher Godwin at 6,700. His over-under on, on DK Sportsbook is 6.5. He has hit six receptions in nine straight weeks. He, he Yeah, I wanted him. The price uh, was was above Garrett Wilson. It was above my start of the week, Devontae Smith, so I didn't have the didn't have the money. My final three spots, I am going with my start of the week at the tight end position, which is uh Chig Aconquo. Nice. At just twenty seven hundred. Yeah, that's so that's how you got Stephon Diggs in that's there. that yep. And then my uh my flex position is Rashad White at 5,500. Looking at the PPR Ooh. value of Rashad White, despite the matchup against San Francisco, I think he's good for eight catches in this game. And then I'm going with uh, bottom of the barrel defense here. Uh, I'm going with the Carolina Panthers against Seattle at 2,200. And uh, I had to save a little money. It was that or it was spinning up on Dallas and then moving Rashad White down to like a Chris Moore type in Houston, so I went with the Rashad White and Carolina. Little known fact, Chris Moore, also a wide receiver that has outscored Mike Evans since week nine. Oh, gross. He plays hey. for Houston. You might not know him. Uh, tight end, I went with Andy start of the week as well. Oh, did Save you really? Money and Chig Okonkwo is in my lineup. Uh, I paid up. Because I never get to do this at defense, I went with the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. yeah, baby. Um, at 3800 I still think that they I, – I, I feel like 10. They're expensive. 10 is like a baseline for them, and I'm um, hoping for 24. And then at flex, I went with Joe Mixon at a very nice 6900 oh. against Cleveland's good uh, run defense. They've talked about him basically being – well, he's talked about him – being the dude when he comes back and Pirine being kind of just the one to punch. So I'm hoping he gets the workload. My my flex, it's DeAndre Swift, so that's a complete wash for us. The Minnesota Vikings just 
awful against pass catching running backs as of late. And he's on my league of record team. We need a we need a little bit of bump there. Uh, Who's your tight end? The tight end position. Greg D. J. Hawkinson oh, right. oh. at fifty one hundred. You spent up. That's I, why your wide receivers are a little thinner. Yes, uh, I wanted in on the revenge game. I want pieces of the Minnesota Detroit. I'm just I'm be, I'm betting it all. Really, <laughs> just, my life is dependent on the Minnesota Detroit matchup. Hitting that over. And then at my DST, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I like that. Twenty eight hundred at home against yep. Huntley and no one else. No, really. I, I get so, it. I get it. We actually have a lot of. I know the the running back rooms. We share we share some players there, but elsewhere, um, we got some got some interesting names. Should be an exciting week. I can't wait to lose. Uh what do you think of these lineups, Kyle? Do you want to go ahead and make a prediction here on the show? I like Mike's, but I'm also very biased for our League of Records yes. team. Yes. Great. <laughs> we ride, Kyle. All right, that was Fantasy yeah. Face-Off presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. We're done. We did it. It's time. Week 14. Week. Fantasy playoffs. Let's go get them, Foot Clan. I'm going to go get some sun. <laughs> going to go catch a wave. Uh, your nose is protected. I will see you on Sunday Live, Foot Clan. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.